Fossil Vega, Willie, brilliant winner of the champion bumper in tough conditions last year. Everything looked to be going to plan this season over hurdles until the Dublin Racing Festival. Yeah, I think we just got uh, tactics wrong there. Um, I think Paul might have been afraid uh, that Joseph's horse might have been setting a bad example, jumping a bit middle and front, which he had done in his maiden hurdle, and he didn't want to be caught up in that. Uh, but I think the two horses just locked horns going past the winning post first time round. And they went, I thought they went a mile and a quarter speed uh, going down by the reservoir and, uh, reservoir and down by the, um, you know, the first hurdle down the back. And I think, I think he, they just went too fast and took too much out of him. And obviously when, when things weren't going right, Paul sort of eased up on him and pulled him up. And um, so I'm happy just to change of tactics. I mean, if you look at the bumper last year in Shelton, mm. Patrick had him right in at the back. Things didn't go well for him early on, and he got caught in behind a lot of horses. And he just motored his way through them, especially you know when you're coming through all that muck and kick back mm. the first day in Shelton. There was an inch of rain, if people remember. Remember, and um, you know, so I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't see any problem with Paul dropping him in a little bit in, in the Supreme Novice and coming through horses. You know, I think he has the ability, I think he has the class. And as long as that race the other day didn't take anything out of him, uh, I, I think he's every chance of... I suppose that is the big question when you have such a, what appeared to be hard race on that occasion to get him back for yeah. Cheltenham. How has he been since Leopard's Town? He's been good. We've been happy enough with him now. He's been good. So, um, you know, he's a, he's by walking the park, you wonder maybe would he with the crowd and everything upset him, especially if the first race, the first day, there's always a huge buzz around. But um, I'm happy with him since he came back and he's going to have to take take his chance, I think, you know. I, I haven't looked at going up and trip with him. I, I'm happy enough to let him take his chance in the Supreme Novice. And in your mind's eye, in the future, do you see him as a chaser next season or does it all depend how he copes with Cheltenham the Supreme Novice two miles at this point in time as regards hurling next season? Well, he's built like a chaser and all his family uh, were chasers. Uh, I know his dam, Creviga, was a hurdler. We never went chasing with her. But when you go back through his French pedigree, it's all long distance chases cross mm. country, every sort of uh, horse in it. And he has the size and scope to be a fabulous chaser. So... Um, we won't answer those questions until we see, can he, um, would he be one to give Constitution Hill a fright <laughs> with whatever he does in the Supreme? But I've no problem with him going a further trip either. Um, you know, so I think stamina isn't a, isn't a problem with him either. And I you know, suppose... But anyway, we'll try and win what we can this year before we think of next year. <laughs> on the plus side as well, he came out of Cheltenham and he backed up to win a punch stand after that hard yeah. race at Cheltenham. So that has to be a positive going this year again. It, that, I, I sort of forgotten that, it slipped my mind, but um, you know, the fact that he was, very few horses can come back from Cheltenham and win in Pontchartan, and he did that. Um, you know, so that shows the constitution that he has, that he's a good constitution. Hopefully that will stand to him when he, when he goes to Cheltenham this year. You mentioned Craig, Craig, a multiple winner at the festival, of course. What the similarities are, if you like, dealing with her and dealing with him? Well, she wasn't a big mare. He's, he's got huge size and scope. All the, all the horses in that family were big. I had a half-brother of Kaviga, and we've had a few other relations. They, all the geldings had plenty of size. The mares tended to be a little smaller. Uh, but, you know, just ability. Mm -hmm. um, that's what this fellow has. He can, he can, he can quicken and change gear. Um, he's a huge stride. And we campaigned... Quivega over over three miles because we had Hurricane Fly, but I, I had no doubt at the time she could have come back to Pontchartan and won the the Pontchartan Champion Hurdle. Mm. She had that much speed, so she had. But we let her out to three miles because Hurricane Fly was doing two miles. You know, no point in <laughs> killing one another. And um, you know, she did win, I think, top grade over two miles one year in Pontchartan. Mm. Uh, so and he has that ability as well with with size and scope. State man Willie, he uh, made a mockery of his handicap mark when winning the county hurl last year as a likely race novice, of course. He's back as a leading contender for the champion hurl this year. Yes, he's done everything right this year, winning three from three. Uh, I think he's improving all the time, you know, and, and he still has scope for more improvement. Um, probably the best ground he has run on was, was uh, Leperstown the last time, you know. But he's by Dr. Dino. I think his pedigree suggests that ground won't be an issue. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a dry opening to Cheltenham. 
no forecast of any rain between now and then that we can see anyhow on, on whatever short term forecast we have. Um, I'm happy though with the pedigree that, that he'll, he'll handle the ground. Uh, Constitution Hill looks like he's going to be a tough nut to crack, but this fellow is improving. I think he's still improving, and his experience over the track last year will stand to him. His jumping has got better run to run this season. Yeah, uh, I mean, any horse that can win the county as a novice has to be a good jumper. I think the faster the goal, the better he'll jump. He's a strong traveller. Constitution Hill's a strong traveller as well. Yeah. How do you see the race in your own head developing? I know it's a couple of weeks away. It's but going to be very tough tactically for for Paul and this fellow, but I think it's up to Constitution Hill. So, you know, when you're going in there uh, as a second favourite, um, it makes it easier for Paul. I think it's, it'll, be, it'll be Nicole's problem rather than ours, I think, what way the race. Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricane Fly, Annie Power, you've been there, done that with horses. What attributes do you need for Champion Hurl? What does this guy bring to the table? Oh, I, I think you just need, you need to be able to jump very slick and very fast. And um, you just need to be good and uh, handle, handle nice ground. But um, you need, you know, I suppose, speed. He's going to need a lot of speed with Constitution Hill, I think. And is he just getting to peak? Is he where you want him at present on the back? Yes, he's coming all the time. You know, I think I think there's more to come, and that's the one little card we have up our sleeve. You know, maybe Constitution Hill has is as good as he is. Um, but uh, I think this fellow's improving. So he's pretty relaxed about it. Fingers him. crossed. Yeah, oh, he's he's a relaxed, dude. That's what will stand to him, I think, in the build-up to the champion hurdle. Henry Gamine, last year's champion chase winner, done it in great style, very testing ground that occasion. Will he? How's he been since not maybe running up to his best at Cheltenham last time? Yeah, I, 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 I'm probably a little disappointed with him in Mallow, but he won uh, his first run of the season, or as we call it, Cork nowadays. Um, and I sort of forgave him, I said that's his first run of the season, and then uh, he got beat in Cheltenham in the Clarence House. and. Um, that was on the new course. Mm. No, I think he won the champion chase on the old course, which he'd be going back to. I just think he had a look at the first fence, uh, even though he'd schooled over white and brown fences, this, the, the apron in Cheltenham which is green. Mm. And I think it's the only track in England that they have green aprons. I think all the rest are brown. Uh, so anyhow, we bought new green, <laughs> green ones for him and he's schooling well over them. Uh, I think we'll see a different horse when we go to uh, go back for the champion chase. Uh, Paul was very happy with him, said he needed the race. Um, he missed that first fence, and, and when you miss the first one in a, a race, you know, sharp two mile races, it's hard to get back where you should be. Um, I'm happy he's making nice progress at home. I think back on the old course will be better. Uh, so um, it's all to play for. Could you see a return to more positive forcing tactics with him in the champion chase in comparison last time? I imagine it was a sort of a cat and mouse race the last day, um, you know. So, yeah, yeah, you, you probably would be more. Um, you'd probably keep closer order to the ones in front the next time. Uh, but I think that'll be not, a good jump at the first. Will you know be crucial in a race like that? Just mm. to stay, get your jumps in early, get your position, and he can he can make it or he can come from behind. It's it's not a real issue with him. I think it'll be more a problem for. Uh, the horse is making it, and Edward Stone may be coming from behind. You know that he'll have to keep tabs on the one in front. Lost him out, Willie. She was perfect two from two until things didn't go to plan at Dublin Race and Fast where She was second to her stable companion. That, that's right. She looks um, she looks a cut above most of them. She was very unlucky the last day against Gala Marceau, uh, who she'd beaten before at Christmas in the Grade Two, and I think third in that race was Nusrat, who won the Adonis Hurl in. Kempton. Um, so, you know, that form is stacking up well. And she's really laid back. She's a bike great pretender. We had a really good filly here uh, a few years ago, bike great pretender. Um, Benny did. Uh, Benny did, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I like her. I just, you can see her here. You know, she's like a child's pony. I think the occasion won't get to her in Cheltenham. And she, even though she got beaten the last day, and I thought had a hard enough race, she's come out of it very well. Uh, I think she's got all. You know, she jumps well, uh, she settles, Paul can put her anywhere he wants in a race. Uh, there's a lot to like about her and, um, you know, I think a few horses will have to probably step up to 
to get up near her. She showed a sharp turn of foot in each of her two runs to win, but the way she made up ground in Leopardstown, she had to stay and be tough to get as yeah, close as she did to the winner. You know, for a four-year-old to do all that, I think it's, it's a great sign. And she jumps well. She's very uncomplicated, which is what I like about her. And she comes home, she eats up, comes out onto the gallop, uh, you know, like... Neve Roach rides her out and, you know, the, she's very easy ride and Neve rode her a bit of work yesterday. She said she's really flying, so to be going that well this far out is good, I think, so I'm very happy with her. Quite remarkable. She made her debut as a three-year-old back in April 2022, an early starter and uh, the way to kick off so early in France with juveniles. That, that's right, but she, you know, she's just showed that she's precocious and, um, uh, you know, she's held that form all the way. You know, apart from just the, the traffic problems she had in Leopardstown the last day. Blue Lord Willie was very, very good in winning at Christmas, that grade one. Maybe not quite up to the same form, possibly, at the Dublin Racing Festival. Yeah, Daryl got a great tune out of him at Christmas. Um, you know, he completely, I'd say he surprised us the way he won at Christmas. And um, because I had him sort of marked out as a sort of a two and a half miler, but we ran him in that race because it was the only one that suited him. Uh, and then we, of course, we went back for the, the big two mile chase at Dublin Racing Festival. And he, second to gentleman to me, um, a little disappointing, I think beaten seven and a half lengths or something. Uh, so now it looks like we'll probably go down the Ryanair route, go up to two and a half miles. I know we've Shishkin waiting in the wings there for us, but um, it, with Alaho out, he looks probably one of, you know, one of our best representatives there. And, um, I think two and a half won't be any problem to him. He won over two and a half earlier in the season in the Morris Oil Chase down in Clonmel. Uh, so I think, you know, all in all, he, ha he has, we, we know he's plenty of speed for two miles, but um, possibly his best chance of a win is over two and a half in Cheltenham in the Rainer. He's had the experience, of course, running at Cheltenham. He was third in the Arca last year. He would have been a good second potentially in the Supreme Novice that, that that's year. That's right. He, he had a real good run over hurdles in the Supreme Novice, uh, second to a would have been second to appreciate it had he jumped the last, he just knuckled over. And, um, you know, so we know he goes around the track and that's, that's always a plus going to Cheltenham. But uh, he's in good shape and uh, I think he'll run well over that trip. You mentioned Alaho is out and uh, Ryanair looked a very open race until Shiskin bounced back to form at Ascot last yeah, week. Yeah, Nicky Henderson uh, worked the Oracle and got Shishkin back to himself, so, um, which is good to see a good horse coming back, you know. So, um, uh, they're going to they're going to fancy themselves on the day in Cheltenham, I think. Um, but and yeah, this fellow might have something to say about it. Great to see Al Gori Devasi here today, Willie. Um, she was spectacular on chasing Debbie Limerick. Uh, that shot's down the back straight. The way she jumped from fence to fence was quite taking. Yeah, she's just a natural jumper. She did a lot of schooling in France before we bought her over hurdles, but mm. um, you know she is a novice going for the mare's chase. Colreevy did it as a novice. Ellie May was second that year and then came back and won it the following year. Uh, it's always a bit of a risk going for a chase like that with a novice, but she seems to have such class. You know, she's a fine big mare by no risk at all, same sire as Idaho. And, um, you know, she has a, a classy sort of a, a pedigree. And, you know, she, she, she's done everything right. Two from two over fences, I think two from two over hurdles last year. Uh, the, the horse that she beat, 19 lengths, Brides Hill, came out and won the listed mare's chase in Thurless the other day, mm -hmm. beating uh, Tell Me Something Girl, who, had, who is a Cheltenham winner, you know. So the form is stacking up all the time, getting better. Just lack of experience over fences, but I, I don't want to run her again. I'm going to take my chance and run her there. She just looks to be... Uh, she looks to be a natural jumper, anyhow. Not, not sure I learned the most in Thurless, Paul or her, but it's a little bit of mishap at the first fence. Yes, totally unexpected, but um, you know, that's all experience mm. and hopefully she's learned a lot from that. And going to Cheltenham, just having had the two runs in Ireland last year of Hurls and two this season, it's your first time away from home effectively. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a risk, but we have to do it, you know, so um, it's just the way she got injured last year after her second run and missed Cheltenham. Uh, but, you know, it's... It, it's the way the thing, thing has landed now and we have to go that way. 
And that high cruising speed that she has will be an asset to challenge. Yeah, her high cruising speed and just her ability to jump. I mean, if you remember her going up the back stretch in Limerick, mm -hmm. you know, she just went from fence to fence as if she was a handicapper, loving it all. And that was hugely heavy ground that day. It's very hard to jump out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, she made it look like she was galloping on good ground. Uh, she just um, took it so easy, everything in her stride. How did she measure up against the likes of a Col Reavy at this stage of her career? Uh, Col Reavy had a very stout jumping pedigree. Uh, this one has probably uh, more speed than Col Reavy, I think. Col Reavy mm -hmm. gallop all day. Um, um, yeah, I think this one just could have a little edge on class, but whether she's as hardy as Col Reavy when push comes to shove or not, I don't know. Two good mares. You could take any one of them home, I think. Willie, the countdown is on to the Gold Cup. It's great to see Gallup and Sean here this morning. How's he been since the Irish Gold Cup? Uh, I'm very happy with him. I'm very happy how he raced there as well. He settled great for Paul. And I think the slow pace probably didn't help him because, you know, once he was settled so well and then horses probably that shouldn't have been around him turning for home were all around him and still going well. Mm. But uh, I, Paul said to me, it took him a while to get him going. You know, we had... His training this year has been a little bit different. We haven't been hard on him uh, to keep keep the lid on him, and um, it's working, I think. You know, so we're we're very happy. Paul said once he got him going, he was only getting going, going through the line, and it took him a few furlongs to pull him up. And uh, so we're very happy how we stand. And that was the thing as a novice last year. He's very exuberant through a race. He was coming out of Paul's hands and landing on the back of a fence hard in a bridle, maybe doing too much. Yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was a little worry, but I was very pleased how he, how he raced in the John Durkin this year. You know, he was very behind the bridle, very settled, like um, an old stager, like a three-mile chaser, and he did the same in Leopardstown. So I, I'm really not worried, I think. My, you know, we're, we have to look forward at Cheltenham and look at the, why did he fall last year? He jumped the fence perfectly. Mm -hmm. He just slipped or something on landing. Um, hopefully that won't happen this year. I know you've got your green and white fences this year to try it, <laughs> to trick us, but we've been, we bought new ones. <laughs> did you get a tin of white paint or? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I wish, but we bought Easy Fix uh, fences and they've come with the green foliage and you know, green and white, and we've brown and white fences ready for every eventuality <laughs> this year. And the extra two and a half furlongs, of course, challenge them different tests, but as you said, the way he's settled in that Yeah, I, I think, you know, the way he settles now, he'll be fine. You've won the Gold Cup in the past. How does he stack up with the rest of your past winners? Of yeah, this guy probably has more speed than the ones uh, with than album. And, um, you know, similar type of horse, uh, French bread, same colour, uh, but I, I think probably has a little bit more speed than Album, but um, you know we know Album stayed all day, so this fellow's got to prove that yet. But every chance he could. Willie, the Sporting Life Arkle—it's one of the most exciting races of the festival. That short run to the first fence for two mile novices. El Fabiolo—he's at the top of the pecking order after a spectacular win in Leopardstown. Yeah, he was very good in Leopardstown. Um, you know. Uh, John Bond himself, uh, they had formed from last year in Aintree. This was his second run in his life, and mm -hmm. he ran John Bond to a photo finish. Um, I think that run puts him right in the picture. His run in the Arkle in Leopardstown was spectacular after, after making a bad mistake down the back. Um, you know, that race was good. I think uh, Banbridge, Dyser Dynamo behind him, uh, appreciated mm -hmm. fourth, you know, so that's... You know, the form of those three horses alone is very good. Puts them right up to the top of the tree, I think, uh, for the Sporting Life Arkle. He had a bloodless win and chasing debut. He would have learned a lot in Leopardstown. That mistake maybe was a good thing for the future, potentially? I think so, but, you know, he jumps well. And um, I think fences suit him better than hurdles. I think he was too keen over hurdles. Fences have sort of steadied him up a little bit and made him, made him more mature. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to it to uh, going to Cheltenham with him. So, yeah. Huge ask last year, he won a Tremor Maiden Hurley, went to Aintree, as you said, he ran John Bond to Neck. Yeah. He looks the biggest UK danger to him this year in the Arkle. That, that's it, you know, his form ties in well with John Bond and I think it's all to play for. We were so inexperienced when he met John Bond the last time. He's got a lot more experience, racing experience, not, not even jumping, but just racing experience. Uh, that's going to stand to him, I think, and it'll 
you know, it gives him every chance. I think he's, he's a horse that goes to Cheltenham uh, with a huge chance. Lightly raised, do you think there will be more to come? He should be improving all the time, as you say, lightly raised. He should be improving, yeah. So he's, he's one we're looking forward to going over there with.